So it sounds like, according to the Treasury Secretary, the president is now pleased. Last week, before Powell's speech, I mean, there was not even a little bit he said that he liked about Powell. How is all of this, do you think, resonating inside the Fed, which, of course, is, nothing, is saying nothing publicly about the president's criticism? Well, yeah, thanks for having me on. I I actually think that the, the president's criticism is probably working in the opposite direction of what he intends. And what I mean by that is, you know, if, if the Fed feels on the margin that maybe it's better to go a little slower with rate hikes just because of economic conditions, they have to worry that doing so is going to make them seem like they're operating at the behest of the president. And that's bad news because that could, could lead to increases in inflation expectations that they don't want to see. So they could be loot. What, what, what the problem with the president's comments is it puts the Fed in a little bit of a box. They have to keep being um, going on with their planned rate hikes. If they don't do that, then they risk seeming soft and in the, uh, under the control of the president. And that, that's a message they don't want to be sending to markets. But Mr. Coach, look, if we step away from what the president is saying and whether or not uh, it might be working against his intentions, what, what should the Fed be doing, in your opinion? Earlier this year, you were concerned that a recession was a possibility in the next two years. And, and like the president, you did want the Fed to slow down its pace of hikes. Is that still your view? It's, it pretty much is my view. I'm a little bit torn here because I think the, the president's uh, comments are, uh, in my mind, uh, right on the economics. So I, I, I think that the, I see a lot of downside risks out there. Uh, uh, soft global uh, growth um, and, and softening in housing in our own country. And so I think those, those kinds of downside risks should make the Fed very hesitant about raising, raising rates. Uh, the problem is that he's the president. <laughs> I'm a professor of economics, so I get to say what I want. He doesn't. And that's, that's I think, the, the, the challenge he, he doesn't seem to have sorted out yet for himself. But I just want to help contextualize your comments. I mean, you, you are a super dove. Right. You, you've always advocated for sort of lower rates, more easy policy than the center of the Federal Reserve. Is that accurate? Uh, I think I'm actually sort of famous for switching sides. Uh, I, I, uh, I was well, uh, since you fairly did that. Uh, concerned about high inflation if you go back far enough. More recently, I, you know, I've continued to see I, I, since I became a dub, I'll put it this way, in, uh, in I guess it's been all, oh, over six years now. I have felt that my uh, reading on the economy has uh, not been off. In, in fact, I've always been concerned that I've ended up being too hawkish. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, 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 I continue to worry about those downside risks. And frankly, as I say, you know, there's just nothing in the economy that over the last six years that's made me regret um, um, pushing for uh, more accommodative policy. What, what do you make of the fact that the twos fives uh, part of the curve inverted today and that the twos tens is uh, as low uh, a steepening a steepness as it has been since 2007, less than 30 basis points? I think it's very difficult to know what to make of that. Um, I, I'm sure it'll be a cause for concerns for some people on the committee, to be, to be, to be, to be clear. I, I, I think it's we don't have, you know, there's this well-known empirical regularity that an inverted yield curve forecast in a recession, not unfortunately at a fixed uh, horizon, but at some point in the future. And we don't really understand uh, as economists what the, that linkage is. And we're staring at a, um, a Treasury portfolio and the Fed's hands is quite different than what we've seen historically. And that could be creating uh, spurious readings from that, from the, from the, from the yield curve than uh, about the future of the economy. So I personally don't know what to make of that. I, and I'm not paying much attention to that when I, I think about the course of future policy. So uh, clearly you, like all of us, have been listening to Chairman Powell. Do you think last week's speech was a huge shift, was a game changer in the way he's thinking, and, and he's now more flexible and, and more dovish and coming around more to your view that there may be some weakness and they don't have to raise policy, raise, high, raise rates? I, 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 I would... I would love if that were true. Uh, I, I, I doubt if it's true. I, I think that the, um, the, the chairman has a difficult job in terms of communication. Um, he doesn't want to seem too hawkish. He doesn't want to seem too dovish. Uh, you know, if you come out of Jackson Hole, uh, he gave a speech where he really seemed to be arguing, well, we, we could really stay very accommodative for, for maybe longer than people expect because of changes in the 
uh, changes in the economy. So I, I think he's gone, you know, it's a difficult job in terms of communicating exactly where the course of policy is going to be. We're going to learn a lot in a couple of weeks when the Fed meets from those summary of economic projections and, and then from the press conference. It just allows him to be more responsive to the, to the questions of the media and then, and then he has the, uh, the backdrop of the, of the projections from the committee to, to, to help him communicate more effectively.